Hey everyone, Michael Short here. Come on, let's go outdoors. Well, I cannot think of a better location to talk about bees because you need lots of flowers and look at this area <laughs> and you need an expert to educate me and you on some stuff you may not know about bees in Alberta. Megan Evans, the Executive Director of the Invasive Species uh, Council here in the province of Alberta. It's a Sunday morning. Thanks so much for taking some time out and doing this. Yeah, my pleasure, Michael. So what are we in store for today? Well, today we are going to go on a bee safari and we are going to go check out all these beautiful flowers and see who might be visiting them because we might be surprised at what we might find. Now, you, of course, you're tied in with invasive species. So am I correct to assume that we have invasive bee species or, ah. or what? how do they fit in? Oh, that is a, a very interesting question, and we will definitely touch on that today. So, yeah, so I, at my day job, my role is uh, working with the Invasive Species Council, and that's near and dear to my heart uh, because invasive species are the second biggest threat to biodiversity in the world. Uh, and when we think about that, uh, that has a major risk and threat to our native bee species and the, the native flower species that they rely on. So a lot of these, these things are intertwined. So today we're going to be uh, talking, uh, I'll be here representing the Alberta Native Bee Council. We will talk focus in on our native bees we will talk about some non-native bees and the uh, the question over whether or not they can be considered invasive uh, we'll address that in a little bit all right well this should be really interesting <laughs> folks because i've never caught and released a bee before because uh, that's the aim of today so we're uh, we're gonna head off and uh, we'll find our first uh, hopefully our first set of bees or species of bees Perfect. And, excellent all right come along for a walk folks here. Oops. Did I get anything? Oh yeah. Okay, we'll see what I can do. I don't know if I'll be able to get them both in my net, but we'll see what I can do. <laughs> so there are two little itty bitty bees. I don't know if you can see them at all. Okay, okay so we just collected these two uh, little bees on, on flowers just, just over uh, behind me uh, and so so these are two little sweat bees so so most of our bees in Alberta are solitary and live in the ground and these are examples of some bees uh, that live like that uh, most of our bees are only active for three four or five weeks out of the summer so a snapshot of what you'd see today would be very different from what you'd see in August um, so so these are little bees they're only active for for just a few weeks they live in the in the ground and so they'll excavate little tunnels uh, and then they'll they'll uh, the, the females will lay an egg uh, and leave behind a little ball of pollen and nectar for the uh, for the young bee to develop off of um, and then th those bees will typically emerge next year as adults and they'll complete the life cycle all over again so really not what we think of when we think about bees but but is is very much more common in the bee world to have that solitary type life cycle well so far our bee collection has been a little bit <laughs> on the on the slow side it's pretty windy up here and that has a bit of an impact on bees like like I guess they just don't like a lot of wind do they yeah it's, it's, it's harder to find them too when it's windy right so uh, everything's moving about and you can't really kind of spot them quite as easily but and it's also a little bit early in the day too so you're prime bee watching between 10 to 4 and right now we're just just about quarter past 10 a.m. so they're just getting up and about so of course Megan uh, we've heard in the news um, over the last number of years the, the, the bee population mm. is is really on the decline the types of bees that you've been talking about today are do those fall into that category and and how do we you know how are they different from what most people i guess when they see a bumblebee or a honeybee mm -hmm. how how does that differentiate itself well, so there's a, a few things there. So, so number one, I guess, would be uh, that our insects are declining globally and drastically right now. There, there is a crisis with regard to insect population decline. We even have evidence from right here in Alberta that shows uh, we've seen, you know, a 50% decline in abundance of, of, of bees uh, here in southern Alberta. And that's in line with other research across the globe that's shown, you know, 75% declines over, you know, 25 years and things like that. So, so there's a lot of things happening out there and our insects are being hit uh, quite hard uh, and, and our bees are no different. So uh, in Alberta, uh, we have 370 native
of bee species, which is almost twice as many as all the mammals, fish, amphibian, and reptile species combined. So you think about the differences in all of the, the mammals, fish, amphibian, and reptile species and how different and the, their life histories are different and life cycles. It's not that much different in the bee world. So, so our bees are obviously more closely related, but, but we've got great big fat bumblebees, right? And, but bumblebees, even though we're very familiar with them, only make up you know, you know, less than 10% of those native bees. So, so what's much more common is, is little teeny tiny black and green bees or, uh, and, and, and what we have in Alberta are, you know, sweat bees and mining bees and leafcutter bees and mason bees and digger bees. And, you know, the list goes on and on and on and they're red and green and black and blue and metallic green and striped and all kinds of things. So, uh, so, so our native bees in Alberta of the 370 species we know of, 60% of them, Michael, are data deficient, so much so that we cannot assign a conservation status ranking to them. So we simply don't know, which is a tragedy, you know, and uh, and about, I think, uh, if I'm memory serves, about 10% of them are rare or declining. We do have some endangered bumblebee species uh, that are listed on the Species at Risk Act. There's two to three, one is being reassessed kind of a thing. Um, but but really the issue here with our native bees is that we simply just don't have enough information. So I guess from, from somebody watching this, and they're going, oh my goodness, this is amazing information. What what can the average Joe like me do to yeah. help yeah. um, our, our native bee species here in Alberta? So the number one thing that we encourage people to do to help bees and help native bees is to plant flowers. And the best flowers for our native bees are the native plants that they evolved with. Um, so, so you know, even if you live in a downtown Calgary or Edmonton and, and you're in an apartment, if you have a patio, you could put flowers out on your patio. And again, some flowers are better than, than no flowers. But again, if you can focus on getting those native, uh, native flowers, that is extremely beneficial. And there are a number of native plant suppliers across Alberta. If you go to the Alberta Native Plant Council's website, they have a list on their homepage. So it's really, they're actually quite easy to find now. Um, and, and so when we talk about native plants, again, Again, 370 native bee species. Some of them, like bumblebees, they're generalists and they're not fussy eaters. They'll forage on anything that they can get their hands on. But but many other bees are are specialists, and so they are very fussy eaters, and they will only forage on a single plant species or a single like group of plants. So so that's much more challenging. So if we if we have you know we go to urban areas and you only have ornamental plant species, we're going to lose all those specialist bees. Mm -hmm. So in order to present to preserve all of the bee species and the native bees that we have, we really need to focus on conserving native ecosystems and native plant species you know and, and that type of thing and then putting it back imagine if everybody put in a one meter square plot of native plants in their yard what a difference that would make so when it comes to the bees and and the, some some eat the plants some pollinate that type of thing when it comes to invasive plant species oh. is that uh, a catalyst for how invasive species get spread because of what the bees are doing. So yeah, there, there's a lot there too. So so some some bees will forage on, on invasive plant species. You know, you see a, a knapweed plant, it's loaded with bees all the time. Blueweed, bumblebees love it. But again, there's many of our specialist bees that absolutely cannot forage on those uh, those invasive plant species. The other problem with the invasive plant species is that they outcompete the native plants. So not only are they there, they're outcompeting the native plants. They might have a different phenology, so they might bloom at different times. And, and again, they're decreasing the overall biodiversity. So we were out here today and there's probably a half dozen uh, native plant species that are in full bloom right now. That, that's probably a fair estimate. And then two weeks from now, the situation here is going to look very different. There are going to be new native plants mm -hmm. and wildflowers that are blooming. And two weeks from then, it'll look different again. So if you have a one or two invasive plant species that comes in and takes over and outcompetes all those native plants, you, what you have is, you know, knapweed only blooms in August. So you don't have any food for the bees the rest of the time. And there's a lot of studies that have looked into this and we could talk about it all day, but ultimately, uh, you know, a lot of people say, well, I leave the dandelions, it's food for my bees. And the, the short answer is yes, many bees will feed on dandelions. I, and, and, and I guess the long answer and the more complicated answer is that it's not great for them and only some bees can feed on dandelions and dandelions can outcompete the native plants that our native bees really rely on. Fascinating stuff, Megan. Thanks so much for spending some, some time with us and educating us on bees. Awesome, thanks, Michael. Well, there you go. That's the buzz of bees, folks. Okay, corny, I'm sorry. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> Megan, thanks again. Till next time, everyone, I'm Michael Short. Come on, let's go outdoors. <laughs>